Hi, and welcome to the Golden Years of Hollywood. Well, 1939 was a very busy year for producer David O. Selznick. Not only was he making what would become the greatest film of the era, that's Gone with the Wind, but he was overseeing production of Intermezzo and doing pre-production work on Rebecca, the film that would launch Alfred Hitchcock's American film career. But it's Intermezzo that I want to talk about today. It's a beautiful film that deals with love, infidelity and all of its consequences. But it's probably best remembered today as the film that launched the Hollywood career of Swedish actress Ingrid Bergman. Ingrid Bergman was already a well-known actress in her homeland when she appeared in the original 1936 version of Intermezzo. The film was brought to the attention of David O. Selznick by Kay Brown, who was responsible for letting him know about stories and books that might make good films. In fact, it was Kay Brown who advised Selznick in 1936 to purchase the film rights to Gone with the Wind before it was even published. Kay Brown organised a print of Intermezzo to be screened for Selznick, who immediately arranged to secure the rights to produce an English version and to hire Ingrid Bergman, who'd made such an impression. Now, upon their first meeting, however, Selznick told Bergman she was too tall and needed a complete makeover, even including a change of her name, to which Bergman firmly replied, no. She said, I thought you saw me in the movie and liked me. Now you've seen me, you want to change everything. So I'd rather not do the movie. We'll say no more about it. I'll take the next train and go back home. Well, Selznick quickly backpedaled and agreed to photograph her with a natural look, which is clearly evident in her first screen test. Now, Leslie Howard is best remembered today for playing Ashley Wilkes in Gone with the Wind, but he didn't want to do that role. The only way that Selznick could convince him to play the part of Ashley Wilkes was to offer him the job of associate producer on Intermezzo, which is something that he'd always wanted to do. Of course, he had to act in the film as well, so it was a busy time for Leslie Howard. In fact, there were days when he'd be Ashley Wilkes in the morning and his Intermezzo character in the afternoon which caused issues in the makeup and hair departments just trying to keep the continuity. And so for the story. Leslie Howard plays a famous violinist called Holger Brandt, who's been on tour around Europe. When he comes back home, we see that he's a loving and devoted family man, and he meets his daughter's piano teacher, who's played by Bergman. At first, he pays not much attention to her, but when he hears her play the piano, he's captivated by her talent. A chance meeting and an innocent chat after a concert leads the two to start an affair that ends with the breakup of his marriage. I have no home any longer. All aboard! Holger, you couldn't have... What did you say to her? He couldn't have borne the lies any more than we could. Now, after travelling and trying to forget the past, Bergman's character is consumed by guilt and decides, in the end, to leave him. Now alone, Holger realises he can't just crawl back to his wife, but decides to make a brief visit to at least see his children. When his daughter is involved in an accident, it forces Holger to face his family and the consequences of his actions. Now, the ending may not suit everyone with modern audiences thinking he should have been thrown back out onto the street, but I believe it works. Edna Best, who plays the wife, does a great job in her role and shows that in the end, she is a stronger and better person for showing forgiveness and accepting Holger back. And after all, she still does love him. Holger. Welcome home. 
Running at only 69 minutes, it's as brief as an intermezzo itself, but is full of beautiful scenes shot by renowned cinematographer Greg Toland, who a few years later would go on to film Citizen Kane for Orson Welles. The exteriors were filmed on the back lot at Celsic Studios, right next to the sets of Tara and the streets of Atlanta. Directed by Gregory Ratoff, who was a gambling friend of Selznick's, it's been said that he actually owed Selznick a lot of money, and his director's fee went to pay off that debt. Now, a lot has also been said of Leslie Howard playing the violin in the film, but let me shatter the illusion. During the close-ups, he actually just kept his arms down by his side, and violinists bowed and fingered the board for him. Shot in less than five months, it cost $850,000 to make, and whilst in the end it lost the studio $300,000, it was a success in that it launched the Hollywood career of the lovely Ingrid Bergman. Sadly though, it was the last American film of Leslie Howard's, as he went back to England not long after to aid in the war effort, which ultimately cost him his life when the passenger plane he was flying in was shot down in 1943. I love Intermezzo, it, it really is one of the classic films from the golden years of Hollywood. And if you haven't already, I hope you get around to seeing it. I'm David Duncan, see you next time.